Hey everybody, Alex here, and welcome to the latest episode of Remakes and Replays, a series of videos where I replay a game for the first time in several years, or play a remake, or a remaster of a game I haven't played in several years, and talk about it. Now, this isn't supposed to be a comparison and contrastion, contrast of uh, what these games are and the differences. Basically, the end question is, does it still hit the same for me personally? And Dead Space, the original, I had played back on the PS3, and truthfully, I didn't even play it day one. Um, I really was more invested into Final Fantasy XI at the time. And I really only heard about this game through another Final Fantasy XI player, actually. And it was the one who ended up moving a few blocks from where I was living at the time with my folks. And I'll never forget, he literally came up to me one day, because we would just hang out, like, you know, we play Final Fantasy, and then we go out for dinner and drinks and stuff like that. He just came up to me, and, uh, because he watches his videos, I have to do it and embarrass him. Hey, uh, you ever played Dead Space? And I was like, no, what's that? And he described it to me. He was like, think of it like Resident Evil on a ship, except... Instead of having zombies that you basically have to shoot and hope you don't run out of ammo, you have to dismember them because otherwise they're just going to keep coming at you. And I was like, oh, that sounds kind of cool. And I never really thought anything of it, but it became like a ritual with him and his roommate or roommates at the time. You have to tell me, I can't remember. Where they would just sit around the one TV they had and he would play Dead Space and they would all watch it. Years later... Um, I want to say the game originally came out in like 2008, I think. Maybe 2009, 2010. At this point, it was a greatest hits game. He and I were hanging out. We were at a GameStop, and I picked it up, and it was used, and it was like, I think, $14.99 or something like that. And he goes, oh, it's such a good game, man. Such a good game. I'm like, oh, I never played it. And he just went, what? How have you not played this? And I was like, dude, you told me about it, and I really didn't care. When I moved into this apartment, so we're going to fast forward a bit. This is like 2011 is when I moved into this apartment. If I wanted to play games, I was digging in the bargain bin at the time. And I've, you know, I've talked about this ad nauseum at this point, um, basically going check to check. And if I needed something to distract myself, it was either a long winded RPG or it was a very cheap game that would just occupy my time. So by chance, I had seen Dead Space, and I decided, okay, fine, you know. So-and-so has been talking it up. Let me go and play it. And I will be honest with you. Right from the get-go, I thought this game was something special. It was dark. It was so creepy. And mind you, we're talking PS3. I didn't have a 360. So are some of the textures muddy by today's standards? Probably. And they are, for the record. But I didn't know. I literally got a PS3 maybe with my second or third check when I was working at, at the Waldorf Astoria. Um, I literally went to the Virgin Mega Store after I got paid. I dug around because they kept all the boxes on the floor, like the actual boxes with the consoles in them. And I just grabbed one that was fully backwards compatible and I walked out. Like I didn't really think anything of it. I just wanted a, a purpose or a means to play PS1 and PS2 games so I could pull stuff out of that entertainment unit and honestly just not use it anymore or sell it on. I can't even remember. But with this game, uh, being in this apartment playing this game, it, it genuinely terrified me. Uh, I am not one to get scared of like your more Resident Evil style survival horror games. When it comes to like, you know, some of the body horror stuff, you know, I'll do the, oh, like, oh man, that that was the cat. You know, I'll, I'll make sound effects like something is like gross or something. And in this case, it's all gross, you know. <laughs> You're cutting off arms, people are deformed, there's blood all over the place. When stuff kills you in this game, you get dismembered. They rip off your arms, they rip off your head, there's blood splatters all over the place through the glory, I think, of the Unreal Engine. I mean, it's basically just black tar. But it was an exciting adventure throughout. And I think for me, what really sent it home was that the ship, the Ishimura, the mining ship, 
was just so moody. You know, you were, it was almost claustrophobic. It was borderline Metroid style, right? Like, I would say kind of like the way Arkham Asylum is a Metroid style game. You know, it is third person, sure. But inherently, as you go through this game, you unlock different security clearances and whatnot. You can go back and find collectibles through audio logs and text logs. And there's a lot of them. And the audio logs, I mean, truthfully, I never really read text logs. I kind of skip through them. I'll listen to the audio ones. And in this case, with this game, they would actually play as you did other stuff, as opposed to some games where you have to stand there and listen, which to me, I think, is, doesn't make any sense. It's a waste of time. That's like me listening to a podcast and just standing in place for two and a half hours. Um, but with this game, you it, it added to the environment. It added to the ambiance of it. You know, they would talk about how individuals were turning into these necromorphs as you're getting attacked by one who's literally just like lurking down the hall. And I can't remember off the top of my head, but I want to say the AI was dynamic um, because at least in the remake, um, I had encounters different than each playthrough one from another. Like for instance, there was an escape sequence and I died because I did. <laughs> and I got assaulted by like 12 necromorphs. The second time there was maybe one. So I want to say that maybe there's some sort of wacky AI going on in the in the original, but I can't remember off the top of my head. What I do remember is at the time, I was starting to get this trophy collecting itch. And that was, bo shut up Rusty. And that was born of the fact that I, um, I truthfully just needed to spend more time playing games so I would spend less money. And trophies were truthfully a way for me to do that. Now, did I get platinums and stuff? No, not really. I, but if I saw like, hey, try to beat the game with nothing but the plasma cutter, sure, I'll try that. You know, that failed <laughs> by the end. Because uh, truthfully, as much as this game is moody and it's dark, um, there is not much of a story going on either. It gives you everything through the environment. It gives you everything through the audio logs. It gives you everything through the text. Because as I remember, Isaac doesn't really talk much at all. As a matter of fact, I thought he was like some sort of like wackadoo robot for the longest time based on the marketing until I realized, oh, he's a systems engineer. Why does he look like the bringer of the apocalypse? And then I saw the spacesuit in Strange Journey, Shin Megami Tensei Strange Journey, and it was similar, kind of like this weird, like uh, what I call techno priest looking helmet thing. And that really added to the terror too. But you find out Isaac is just an engineer. He's just an everyday guy. And he's almost adopting a disguise to be just as terrifying to the necromorphs because he's able to do what they do, which is rip you apart. And finishing the game, and I will say there may be some influence of Resident Evil 4 in this game too because the last boss of, of the original Dead Space is an absolute jerk and it is so much driven by action as opposed to the rest of the game which is yes there's some action sequences but they're more so like okay you have limited ammo you have to be strategic oh and by the way you're going to die in two hits it doesn't matter if you updated your suit and everything else and that's something that was also cool about this game was the RPG mechanics of using benches to update your suit and everything else. And you can kind of customize and tweak it a bit. There are parts where you'll go out into space, which truthfully were my favorite parts back in the day. Because from a sound design perspective, they literally created a vacuum. So not only is it terrifying in the Ishimura, it's terrifying to be outside because there's nothing there. <sighs> It was such a great experience because of how scary it was. And I hadn't played a survival horror game since Resident Evil 2 on the PS1 at that point. I skipped 3. I didn't play 4 until years later. As a matter of fact, I think my first time playing 4 was actually on the PS3 when they did a, a remaster of it. And I've replayed it several times since. I truly enjoy that game. Unfortunately, I played the remake before I thought of this whole thing, so. But it's, it's great, you know, you just suplex anything. But for the record, Isaac can't suplex. But what he can do is he can stomp the hell out of stuff to basically <laughs> break their brains open and kill them. 
because traditional bullets to the head won't really do anything. If you cut off a head, they'll keep coming at you. The best strategy you have is to take out their legs and then stomp off their arms. And this game was just so great at how moody it was. And when the second game came out, I was stoked. Never mind the first boss, just driving me nuts. Um, which is purely an action thing, to be clear. Um, the second game... <laughs> The second game, I think, is really where this series hit its stride. It really embraced the survival horror of it. But unfortunately, as a lot of people know with the third game, EA started to EA things, you know, microtransactions. Oh, we have the multiplayer. We'll have a bunch of engineers running around. And it became largely action-based. And there was even microtransactions on the bench where you updated your stuff. It made no fucking sense. But um, I also came to understand a little bit later that the, the purpose of that was to basically close out the series and then change the genre altogether. Um, what that was, I don't know, because Visceral Studios closed shortly thereafter, which is really unfortunate. But with the second game, I do have a very funny story. Um, I got the Stupid Edition, which came like a, with a replica of the Plasma Cutter, and I do believe I was on YouTube for the first time at that time. And everybody was talking about getting it. And at the time, if a special edition, limited edition, collector's edition came out, in the glorious days of the YouTube gaming community, it was your responsibility to go out and buy said collector's edition. And at one point, I had statues of bullshit I didn't even care about. One of which being the plasma cutter. But the good news is about Dead Space 2 on the PS3 was that it came with the graphic novel. I think that was a pre-order bonus but also a PlayStation Move version of Dead Space Extraction, which was a rail shooter game on the Wii that I had no idea about. You hear this? I love this series. Can't wait for the second one. There's a spinoff game. Had no idea about it. None. And as a matter of fact, that graphic novel thing they did, it was kind of weird because it had a little bit of that Image Comics 90s aesthetic to it. And ultimately, it was just a puzzle game. But it was really meant to be more of a bridge, which I did kind of appreciate. But in terms of design, it was really different than what the original Dead Space was. And I don't know, maybe that was them just throwing stuff at the wall to try to make it stick. But with the second game, day one at GameStop, I was at my parents' house. And uh, I was having dinner with them, I think. And my mom was like, oh, do you want me to drive you home? And I was like, yeah, sure. So we're driving up. And I go, oh, I have to stop over here quick. And she's like, oh, what for? And I was like, oh, I have to pick up a prescription. And then we pull up in front of the GameStop, and I kid you not, guys, like, I am closing the door, and she's like, you gotta be fucking... And I just close the door, come back with this box, and she's like, I can't believe you still play this shit. And I was like, well, think about it. I've been having dinner with you guys three nights a week. Do you honestly think I have money to do anything else <laughs> other than buy $79.99 uh, dollar collector's editions? I ran home... And this was a day one play for me. Dead Space 2 is a phenomenal game if you haven't played it. Um, Dead Space 3 is, truthfully, is good, but kind of like how Resident Evil 4 really started to go more action. That's kind of where 3 went, and they tried to lean more into, like, survival, but not survival horror. But ultimately, the first game is really where it started. And while I do think 2 is the best, 1 for me is by far the most memorable. Now, coming into this remake, I truthfully was excited that they were remaking it. I was excited that they got, I hope, some of the gang back together because there's a lot of similar guts in there. But what I didn't realize is that they really tried to not just remake this game one for one, they wanted to expand upon it. And maybe, this is me projecting, do the same with the rest of the series and kind of revitalize it. Now, this game did review very well. I don't know how well it sold, but knowing EA, it's never good enough. And even then, there was one micro... There was no microtransactions, actually. There was just one bit of DLC, which I think is an art book, which I didn't get. But... And I think maybe there was a stupid edition that you had to buy directly? I can't remember. But this would also be the first time my wife had ever seen me play the, ori the original Dead Space. She had seen me play the third game, which admittedly, as I said, was more action-driven anyway. But what I didn't expect with this one is... if. Dead Space 3 is more akin to Resident Evil 4. This game is more akin to Resident Evil 4 Remake, where we're taking something existing and we're expanding upon it. And we're also going to try to keep some of that essence of survival horror, but ultimately 
we have to make it more action-y, I think is really the best way to put it. Case in point, Isaac talks a lot. Um, I was not expecting that in the first game, or the original rather. He kind of just grunts and groans, grunts and grunts and groans the whole time. Ugh. In this one, you know, he's visibly like, you know, interacting with the crew that he boards Ishimura with. And at first I was kind of like, okay, this is a little different. It's uh, a little bit less scary than I thought it was going to be. And sure enough, I don't know if it's the lighting they chose or what have you, but this game is actually pretty freaking bright. And it's not a bad thing. It's basically saying, okay, cool, we're taking what we have, we're, ma we're making it more modern, and we're going for that hey, you play the original survival horror experience and the guts are still here, but we have to make this appeal to other people so we keep our jobs. Like, that that's really where I think it went. And it shows to the game's benefit. And by that I mean, this game is a lot more accessible. You know, as opposed to me who usually plays survival horror games at night or early in the morning before the sun comes up because, you know, playing survival horror at three in the afternoon, what's wrong with you? Um, I was more than comfortable doing that uh, with this game. I could play it at any given time. It's kind of like, I think the comparison I gave somebody was, you know, if the original Dead Space is like Event Horizon in terms of the suspense, this is basically Isaac Clarke as, uh, as Bruce Willis in the original Die Hard. He's basically in the wrong place at the wrong time and has to run around like a jerk, jerry-rigging and McGuire-ing um, and MacGyver-ring things together so that he can survive and get off this damn rock. And that's kind of where this where this game is. Um, not so much of a, I will say, like, even though I did go after the audio logs, I, once again, didn't really read the text logs because I knew what was happening at this point anyway. But the acting, the voice acting, really added to it. You know, the motion capture, even I originally thought having Isaac talk so much was going to be a little bit of a detriment because I kind of appreciate the isolationist fact uh, of the original game. It really helped expand on his character and how, and I'm, again, not going to spoil anything here, his interactions with the marker, if you know, you know. Um, he really put a lot of things into context. This was stuff I knew. But I really liked the way they went about doing it. It felt more cinematic, while the first game felt kind of like this dark, brooding, I'm almost going to say clunky version of storytelling, which was better suited to text and audio. Kind of like how the original Resident Evil games, you would go through the mansion, we'll say, you know, the original mansion. And you would just find journal entries and stuff like that. And you would create that experience in the back of your mind. That's really where the first game for me personally went about doing that. But in this remake, they kind of sh they kind of show and tell, you know? Even the cutscenes, because there's a few and a bunch of them are in engine. They look phenomenal. I think they used Frostbite in this one, which whatever, you know? As long as it ain't, as long as it ain't Unreal 3, I'm good. But the cutscenes themselves are really well done. They're all in engine, so it's very seamless. There's very little loading, if anything. Pretty much the only loading screens you see are when you die. And you're right back into the action. And that's, again, that's a good thing and a bad thing because it's survival horror. I went into this telling my wife, this is one of the best survival horror games I ever played. You know, so-and-so and I were talking about it. And she was like, wow, this game's really old if you're talking about when he lived next door to you and everything else. And then when you play it, she's like, this looks like every other survival horror game you play. <laughs> and it kind of is. But it's also, a it's also a creature of the market. You know, games are in a very different place now. They have to be made for the purpose of making money. Not that they weren't back in the day, but I feel like you were allowed to be a little bit more creative. You were allowed to be a little bit more adventurous. Now everything is truthfully kind of calculated and while i do think this remake was really well done um there's a little checkboxy stuff in there there's some nods to the old people like me but there's also a lot of different avenues to appeal to new people who may be i don't like horror games i want to play this it looks kind of cool and then somebody like me goes actually it's not that scary which it isn't <laughs> Is the body horror there? Is the gore still there? Is the dismemberment still there? Absolutely. The gunplay is a lot better. But here's the thing. 
I didn't really find the Necromorphs as menacing as I did back in the day. I found them more annoying than anything. I'm like, all right, fuck this shit. Pull out the force gun, just douche, 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 and then keep moving. You know? There wasn't a sense of terror anymore. And I almost want to say that's by design. But that's not really to the game's detriment because Alex today, who already knows what's going to happen, is already prepared for some of these, you know, we'll say high impact moments. Having a more breezy experience is actually good. And it's a very good palate cleanser. Playing the original Resident Evil 4 and then the remake, I had a very similar experience. It wasn't so much that I was expecting to be scared. It was kind of just like, I wonder how they're going to do this thing. Oh, wow, that's so cool. And anecdotally with my wife, I go, watch this. I'm going to suplex a bunch of dudes. And I literally just ran through a room suplexing everybody as Leon. In this game, I would pull out the razor blade and I go, watch this. And I would mow the lawn, just cutting everybody's legs off. And it's one of those gross, like... <laughs> survival horror you know gory instances where you're just laughing like a maniac and she's like i'm kind of scared by this you know you're enjoying this way too much and i'm literally stomping on heads and i'm like picking up ammo and stim pack not stim packs uh health packs and everything else but here's the other part of it too all this stuff is great and it's fun and as somebody who needs more adrenaline in his life this, this could not have come at a better time i did kind of miss the incentive to go back and explore Yes, you do get different security clearances to get through different parts of the ship. And yes, the tram system is still there. It's a little bit more streamlined, so it's easier to navigate. But there's not really much incentive. There are side quests as well, which there were in the original. But they kind of just show up and you're like, all right, fine, whatever. Like, like, like there's really, I did not feel incentivized to go and do them as I did back, way back in the day. And I think that may be more so because I didn't have a means to look things up as much, you know, the internet was the internet back then, but the internet is, back then is very different from the internet today. I could literally just type in Dead Space side quest and I get five hits with a list on how to do everything. Back then I'd be like, Dead Space side quest, and I get somebody be like, I don't know where to find this thing, and then everybody would lie because everybody's a bunch of jerks. But as a quick 10 hour experience down memory lane and bring this series to the modern era, I really enjoyed it. And I think if you're gonna play either version of this game and you want more of a survival horror experience, you gotta play the original. I think it's backwards compatible on the Xbox One. I believe it's on Steam and everywhere else. I uh, don't know how well it runs on modern systems, of course, I still have my old PS3 copy. But if that's what you're looking for, that's the version you gotta play. If you want some modern conveniences like aim assist and a little bit brighter and you don't wanna be scared as much, but you want a very good action movie, you gotta play the remake. So I think that kind of answers the question, does this hit differently for me? Yeah, actually it does. It's not that same terrifying, dark and brooding experience I had way back in the day. This was more just like popcorn, you know? It's something I enjoyed. It's something I felt like didn't overstay its welcome. But if there is one thing I wish they changed, and they did not, it's still that last fucking boss. He's still a pain in the ass. I've been Alex, and I'll see you all in the next video. Take care.